Hey there, Eli again coming at you from OSA Coventry here with another episode of Ecology with Eli. And today we're going to tackle the idea of an ecosystem and whether we can consider our aquariums as ecosystems themselves. In my personal opinion, I like to view every aquarium that I work on, whether it's freshwater, saltwater, reef tank, fish only, as a ecosystem. And what really does that mean? So when we consider ecosystems in the wild, that would take into consideration everything from the living creatures themselves all the way down to the species level with each species being its own type of organism. When we consider ecosystems in the wild, not only does this include each living organism that is present, it also really takes into consideration the bounds in which these organisms live. So if we think about reefs in the wild, we have Caribbean reefs, we have Indo-Pacific reefs, the Great Barrier Reef, we've got all these other different localities and within each of these localities, they have ecosystems that are very specific to these exact environments and these exact conditions. So in my intro ecology video, we did talk a little bit about how some of these conditions vary. It is very well worth the consideration when you're planning an aquarium to kind of think about the ecosystems in which these animals come from in the wild. A lot of the ecosystems, whether you're talking about freshwater community fish, or you're talking about reef fish, are very specific to the places that they come from. And in nature, a lot of species are only going to interact with the other species that come from those same areas. However, when we get into keeping our own aquariums, we kind of get to pick and choose at what we decide to put in our tanks. And this can kind of pose some interesting challenges because sometimes, like if we're looking at my tank here behind us, we've got animals that are coming from different oceans, we've got animals that would never interact with each other in the wild, and then we're also trying to make sure that we are providing the exact conditions for all these animals to live in. And that can just become a daunting task if we're not careful about it. So in defining an ecosystem, each individual ecosystem is going to be specific to where it is confined to in the natural environment. So if we consider our own aquariums as an ecosystem, not only do we consider the actual tangible aquarium and the decorations within the aquarium, so we would consider the bounds of our aquarium in general. This water box 220 behind me holds about 220 gallons of water. And this is my boundary for my ecosystem. In addition, we set this up with a bunch of live sand, which uh, includes a lot of beneficial bacteria, a lot of live small critters, whether they're worms or copepods or the like, and then all of our live rock for our base. Now that actually constitutes the exact area where our ecosystem is going to exist. However, when we start choosing animals to stock this aquarium with, uh, whether that be invertebrates like all the live corals you see behind me, or whether it be fish, that kind of plays a role into how we can form this ecosystem down the road. It's definitely important to plan around what you desire to have as an end goal with your aquarium as soon as you start setting it up. So this tank behind me is basically a softy dominated reef system. That means that this tank is full of a lot of different soft corals, whether that be gorgonians for anthelia, star polyps. It also includes a bunch of bubble tip anemones and some toadstool corals. Now that is the basis of this aquarium. A lot of these squirrels may come from different areas in the wild. However, it's very easy to set this tank up, plan around having all these types of corals, and have decent success with throwing them all together in one tank. However, choosing livestock down the road can actually get a little bit difficult. Generally, when planning a reef tank, you want to stay away from critters that we would label as reef safe with caution. A lot of times this means that those animals might actually nip at corals. So all of the livestock in here is pretty relatively safe with the corals that we chose. This tank has a rabbit fish, which actually had shown some interest in eating some LPS corals. It, it, it was nipping at acans when we added it in the aquarium here. However, we have planned around that to make sure that we don't have anything that's really palatable to this guy. And now he gets along just fine. In addition, this tank has a ras. It's got a zebra moray eel and a couple other options that are pretty appropriate to be housing with these soft corals that serve as the focal point in this tank. In addition to kind of planning around that sort of thing, we also want to add animals that are going to serve a role in our aquarium. Having uh, utilitarian animals, whether they be snails, whether they be algae beaters and other grazers, it makes our job of taking care of the aquarium a lot easier on ourselves. 
and offers kind of a more reasonable environment for these animals to kind of feel more comfortable and more at home in the aquarium. So that fox space that I just mentioned is a great algae grazer. A lot of times they do eat uh, bubble algae, turf algae, ulva, and some of these other macro and micro algaes for that matter. And adding one to a tank that already does have a well-seasoned rockwork that might have a little bit of algae here and there is going to help his fish's overall behavior. And adding this fish is going to keep some of the light work off of cleaning those rocks off for you as well. So it kind of serves a purpose in both keeping that animal happy and keeping some of the work off of your own shoulders in the aquarium itself. So planning your aquarium around having some utilitarian animals is always an important consideration as well to making sure that you have a very well-functioning ecosystem in your own aquarium too. In addition, just choosing animals that are going to get along with each other is also just as important. So many of these animals in the wild, their behavior is going to be a little bit different than it is when you throw them into the confines of your aquarium. Even with some of your larger tanks like this tank here, considering it's over 200 gallons in water volume, you'd think that's about as big as most people can really get at home and it should be suitable for everything. However, that's not always the case. Some animals are still going to grow a little too long. They might outgrow the confines of that aquarium. And in addition to that, sometimes the behavior changes when they feel like there is competition for space. A great example for that would be tangs. A lot of your tangs, regardless of genus, in the wild actually form really big shoals or really big schools to where they actually will graze rocks together and form these really massive shoals of tens or twenties or hundreds of individual tangs same species and they might get along decently well in the wild however if we were to try to do a small shoal of say yellow tangs in this aquarium behind me here they might not get along forever a lot of times adding the confines of the aquarium itself and making the aquarium space limited for these animals that actually can affect their mood so sometimes if you end up adding too many tangs to a tank of this size they're going to bicker and they're not going to get along greatly just because they feel like there is a little bit of competition for space. So that is also a very important consideration when you plan your stocking list for your aquarium. It's just making sure that you're not overdoing anything and that you're choosing animals that are going to get along with each other in the long run. Same rules are even going to apply with your freshwater aquariums. A lot of animals that, especially if they don't overlap boundaries in the wild, they might not get along when you try doing them in a smaller aquarium. A lot of times people will do more of what's called a biotope aquarium, especially in the freshwater setting where you're only going to introduce animals into your aquarium that actually would overlap in the wild setting. So a lot of people that are really into African cichlids say they would keep a Malawi peacock tank for their only Malawi cichlids in that aquarium, where some people keep tanging weak in specific tanks. And even if you get in the South American tanks, some people are keeping certain varieties of discus and they keep their aquarium catered toward keeping that exact species and what that species kind of interacts with in the wild. And this kind of will help to make sure that your animals do transition very well to your aquarium space. You also get really interesting uh, wild behavior out of these animals as well, and they seem just a little more comfortable in those conditions. I suppose regardless of what you plan on with doing with your aquarium, it is always really important to have that broad picture of an ecosystem and a well-functioning ecosystem at that in mind. So it's just important when you're laying out your aquarium, when you get everything rolling, you get your tank cycling, Make sure you sit down and make some plans of how you plan to stock this aquarium down the road, as that can be the difference between having a very easily low maintenance, well functioning aquarium or having one that might give you some hiccups down the road. Thank you guys for tuning into episode two of Ecology with Eli. I hope that this was able to spark some interesting ideas for you guys and kind of help you to consider your tank as a functioning ecosystem. As always, thank you guys for watching. Let us know in the comments section below if you have questions or suggestions for future videos and keep on reaping.